In this video, we're going to talk about the effect that interest rates have on an economy. And to do this, we're going to use the example that we've been using for the, for the last few videos. But first, I'm just going to clear some stuff. So if you remember from our previous videos, these depositors down here were keeping their money, which was equal to 1,000 gold coins, with this commercial bank over here. And the commercial bank was paying them a rate of interest in return. So they give them the gold coins and they get uh, these little paper slips or paper currency plus a rate of interest. Then the commercial banks were turning around and loaning this money out to someone called the Bridge Project and they were charging the Bridge Project a rate of interest plus a spread and the spread was there to basically compensate the banks for the risk that these projects might not be able to pay them back and to also make a profit. And then after that, the bridge project was using that money that they had gotten from the commercial banks to pay workers to build a bridge. And these workers in turn turned into depositors because they were paid this paper currency which they assumed that they could take to the, to the commercial banks at any time and get gold in return. So in this video, we're going to look into the effect of changing this number and this number over here. So let's look at things from the point of view of this bridge project guy. Let's assume that this bridge project guy is very confident that if he builds the bridge, within a year he'll be able to sell it for 1,000 gold coins. So I'm just going to write that over here. 1,000 gold coins. And so this bar represents 1,000 gold coins. Now our bridge project guy is also confident that it'll only take 900 gold coins to build this bridge. And so we're going to put his expected costs over here. And so this area over here represents his expected costs of 900 gold coins. Now, if the bridge project guy basically takes a loan from a commercial bank to build this bridge, we're going to assume that he doesn't actually have this 900 gold coins, or else he wouldn't need a loan. But assuming that he needs to loan this 900 gold coins, what interest rate is he going to pay? Well, if the interest rate in the economy at that time is, let's say, 5%, that implies that the bridge project interest rate is equal to 5%, which is that, plus the spread of 5%, which is 10%. And so that implies that his interest charge will be 10% of the amount of money that he borrows, which is 900 gold coins. And so in a year, the bridge project guy will have to pay back 10% of 900, which is 90, plus the original 900 that he borrowed. And so we're going to draw that over here. And so this is the interest charge of 90 gold coins. And that implies that after all of this is done, the bridge project guy can, can expect a profit of 10 gold coins. And the way you get the 10 gold coins is that you take the expected sale value of this bridge, which is 1,000 gold coins, and you subtract 900 gold coins and the 90 gold coins in interest, and that gives you 10 gold coins. And this is his profit. So his profit is 10 gold coins. So the bridge project guy might look at these 10 gold coins and think, you know, that's worth it. That's a good deal. I'm willing to go through all this trouble and hire all these workers and build this bridge for 10 gold coins. But now let's see what happens if the interest rate in the economy, instead of being 5%, is 6%. So let's, let's imagine that this number here is now 6%. That implies that the bridge project interest rate that he will pay will be 6% plus the 5% spread, which is 11%. And that implies that the interest charge that he'll pay will, instead of being 90, will be 11% of 900, which is 99 gold coins. So the interest charge just went up from 90 to 99 gold coins. And so just to draw that over here, this yellow portion of his costs will now increase and it will cut, cut into his profits. So the interest charge is now 99 gold coins and that implies 
that his new profit is only one gold coin. So the profit becomes one gold coin. And so the bridge project guy might look at this deal where he has to borrow from the bank at 11% and say, it's not worth it for me to go through all this trouble for just one gold coin. I was willing to do it for 10, but I'm not willing to do it for one. And so we can see in this situation what's happened is because the interest rate is higher, it's now 11% instead of 10% for him, it makes it much less likely that the bridge project guy will actually build a bridge and will actually hire these workers and pay them the 900 gold coins that he would have paid them otherwise. And so the aggregate effect on the economy is that there's less money being loaned and therefore there are less projects being run like the bridge project and therefore there's less income being given to workers such as these workers over here who would have made 900 gold coins for working on the bridge. Now changes in the interest rate also has an effect on the depositors. So let's take our original depositors, the ones over here who had deposited 1,000 gold coins with the commercial banks. And let's assume that in addition to those 1,000 gold coins, they also have 2,000 gold coins that they've invested with the grocery store. Now the owner of this grocery store who took the 2,000 gold coins from these depositors promised them a 7% expected return. And so I'm just going to draw that over here. Now imagine that this is a 7% expected return. We don't imagine that the grocery store owner will be able to promise them a risk-free return, meaning this expected return of 7% probably comes with some volatility, meaning it is probably just as likely to be 10% as it is likely to be 4%. And so there's sort of a range of possibilities that this 7% return might be, but the grocery store owner on average promises them a 7% return, but the depositors have to take on some risk. And that risk is that the return might actually be something like 4%, or it might be something like 10%. Now, when the depositors think about making this investment in the grocery store, what they're likely to do is to compare that rate of return to what they can make by just keeping their money in the bank. So if the interest rate's originally 5% in the economy, that would imply that they will make, just having their money sitting in the bank, they will make 5%. And they will make this money risk-free, as in there isn't any expected volatility in this return. So these depositors might look at a 7% expected return, but with some risk, and compare it to a 5% risk-free return, and they might say, you know what, I'm willing to take some risk to potentially earn the 7%. But now let's imagine that the interest rate in the economy by, set by the central bank goes up. It goes up from 5 to 6%. And so this bar over here increases. And so suddenly depositors will be comparing a 7% return with some expected risk to a 6% risk-free return. And you might expect that some depositors will say, you know what, I'm not willing to take all this risk just for an extra percentage point in expected return. And so I'll take some of my 2,000 gold coins out of the grocery store and I'll deposit it in this bank. And so maybe they'll take out you know, 500 gold coins from the grocery store and they'll put in an extra 500 gold coins into their bank so they can earn the 6% risk-free interest rate. So the big picture is that increasing this interest rate basically makes the amount of money that's circulating in the economy decrease. And the reason it does that is because for borrowers, such as this bridge project guy over here, it makes it less enticing to borrow money from a bank and then start a project. And so when the interest rate increased, this bridge project guy suddenly became less likely to actually build his bridge and therefore to hire these uh, workers and pay them the 900 gold coins, which they might have turned around and spent on something else. And at the same time, for depositors, such as this group of people over here, it makes it less likely that they will take their money and spend it or invest it in other ventures because the risk-free rate that they can earn by just having their money sit in the bank is higher. And so effectively, that means that as the interest rate goes up, as the interest rate increases, the amount of money circulating in the economy, or the money supply, 
decreases. And as you might expect, the opposite is also true. So if the interest rate decreases, you'd expect the money supply to increase. Now there's a very important assumption that we've made in all of this. And the assumption is, is that this entire system of there being a central bank and commercial banks and borrowers and depositors sort of happens in a vacuum. We've assumed there are no other countries out there that trade with this country um, described here on the left. But as we'll see in the next video, if you have multiple countries that are on the gold standard, this ability to change interest rates and influence the money supply is severely detrimented.